Hey guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, which by now you are, let's be honest, Mario episode, you're welcome, had about three quarters of the views on YouTube, and a little quarter on audio. If you're still an audio person, that's fine, we're still here. Going to be quick, because as you can see in the background on YouTube, I'm packing for tour. If you're watching or listening to this right now, I'm on tour, Beartooth. Motionless and white, straight from the path. Come to a show. I'm not going to wipe your ass for you. Go and have a little look at the dates. Got to ramp this up. Let's ramp the plugs up. Number one, Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash the downbeat. Oh, why is the camera so good? Because people paid for it to be good. It's one pound. Give me a pound. You want a t-shirt? www.thedownbeat.at So it spells downbeat. That's it. I'm going to tell you about our guest. Then I'm going to do one more ad with these lovely dish plates and then you're going to get the episode. I'm really, someone just told me on YouTube that my intros were really bad. So guess what? You're all not getting them now for at least this episode until there's, I'm hoping, uproar, if I'm honest with you. I'm hoping there's a huge uh, sort of riots and then I can come back and say due to overwhelming demand the intros are back although this is now sort of an intro isn't it my guests this week are Chris and Bryce from Shadow of Intent symphonic blackened death core metal whatever band unbelievable band Chris also plays in Currents Bryce has already done stints with the faceless and stuff like that had a chat about how they write had a chat about getting Chuck Billy on a song we had a lovely little time I didn't really know him I knew Bryce from a Natty or Not video where I sort of realised that he'd made an edit in a video didn't really call him out had a little deep dive realised he was really good I went to go see them at a show afterwards and they really 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 were good you can catch them in April very soon by the time you listen to this or watch this or do anything with this you can catch them in April with Lorna Shaw and Brandon Sacrifice Boundaries, Top of My Head, Body Snatcher, and some sideshow dates. Check them out. Shadow of Intent. Bryce and Chris on the Downbeat podcast. But wait, what's that in the background of the thing? You want a display, don't you? Display is a poster company with a difference. They make metal posters. And I mean literally metal. Not Satan and shouting and not showering for days on end. Literally made of metal. Displays mount on the wall with a magnet. No holes, no drilling, no nonsense. If you're renting, the included protective leaf means you're not going to mess your walls up. Just attach the leaf to the wall, add the magnet, and then mount your disc plate. Because disc plates are magnetic, not only does it take a second to adjust, but you can swap them out depending on your mood. Are you having some sort of manic episode? you want bright colours? Are you depressed? With display, there's an option to 3D print a frame to the side of the poster. It's not a real frame, but it is textured like a real frame. And at the sort of distance that you should be looking at a poster from, it definitely looks like a real frame. If you're looking at your posters really, really close up, you're probably up to something a bit weird. They've got official stores with bands like Gojira, Ghost, Judas Priest, Slipknot, as well as movies, games. We even made a downbeat store. All of the coolest downbeat merch designs. We got the coffee club design. We got tons on there. They got tons of other stuff. You can get 20% off any display using the code downbeat. If you buy three or more, you get 30% off. I get a little bit of kickback from that. You can support the podcast. You can support whatever I do. And your rooms can look cool AF while doing it. Bryce. Yeah, mate. Chris. Shadow of Intent. Mm -hmm. And the immediate English accent. Come on, get it. Yeah, mate. Go on. So... Here's the thing, right? I saw this movie, it's uh, Spinal Tap. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Since I was a kid, and I've been thinking, like, if I practice this, maybe when I go to the UK, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I could, like, fool someone, right? And it did happen the other day. I was on the street, right? Like, by something. I don't <laughs> remember what it was, right? Bloke walks up to me. I'm like, mate. He says something, I speak back to him. He's like, where are you from? I didn't know what to say, so I just said, oh, I'm from Cheshire, mate. 
And it worked because he wasn't from there. He's like, I think I've heard of it. Yeah, I think I've heard of that. And I just kept going and he never questioned me. So, oh my God. Lifelong dream come true. I fooled that's, a real that's British fucking, man. That's fucking good. I mean, I, you could, I think in the North, you could definitely fool someone. Is that where it was? Yeah. Here well, we so that's the thing. That's Are you going to do the whole podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. See, there's so many different like dialects, right? I, I don't know which is northern and which is like a southern. Right, so what yours is currently is uh, it's insane, but <laughs> it's definitely southern. <laughs> it's southern and not quite right. Yeah, so, exa- so, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, so, but no, but as in, uh, yeah, I, I reckon because Cheshire you wouldn't sound like that if you're from Cheshire because Cheshire's like near fucking Newcastle and stuff oh shit that's, that's like up north yeah. just say you're from Reading okay you, that's easy to remember you got a Reading in yeah in PA yeah. PA yeah I think they may be spelled different you need to get closer to your microphone yes sir <laughs> um, sorry that was rude and uh, you need to give me an English accent if you got one so you know Ingested right yeah <laughs> they always say we just did from Slam Chester. Slam Chester. Slam Chester, mate. Slam they're Chester. from Manchester, but they call it. Slam Slam you hung out with them yesterday. Yeah, yeah. they came to the show. And they always say, "You all right, love? You're you're all right. You're all right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. That, that's what we say. I love yeah. that. Are they uh, still big drinking? Big drinkers? Bit of a party, was it? As soon as they came <laughs> in, they fucking spilled beer, and I fucking was cleaning it up, like, literally when they walked in the door. <laughs> now, uh, you threw me off of your real voice there. <laughs> there you go. So the English accent's fucking working. Yeah. That's the problem. We're on tour with Australians, too, and I and I have trouble doing that. But We're on tour with Australians right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying, I hear British people in real life, and then I get on the bus, and it's Australian, and I'm like, fuck. So I'm like... Not even knowing it, but I'm accidentally picking up, and so. Yeah, combine. And see, even I do that when I tour with, like, if I tour with Australians, I end up a little bit Australian. It's if I do ass. a long tour, it's a very cool accent. Who's the Australian man? Uh, to the grave. What? So, you guys, Enterprise mm-hmm. Earth. Yes. yes. Who else is on? Angel Maker. Don't know them. Okay. Canadian boys. And yeah, to Fucking the grave. That's a. That's a you got a whole spread. Yeah, bro. And it's all sold out, UK? Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Good for you. What day, what day are we on? Of UK, this is the fourth. I need you six. to get closer. To fourth of the sixth. Microphone. Yeah, let you me can just... bring it I'm gonna, Yeah, I'm going to bring this closer, maybe. <laughs> just so we get the nice... Yeah, get the crisp. Well, you've been on the Gaza podcast. He's like the only yeah. other one that I've seen, like, he's splashed out. Oh, yeah. Bit of that blast beat money. Put the fucking yeah, put the, get the cameras on there. It was so pro. Uh, did I you do Europe first? Show. Yeah, we're yeah. F- we go back to Europe in three days. Um, Europe, UK, back to Europe. Exactly. I yep. Hate that. The crossing. Yep. Yeah. No fun. And then the difference in like you know Europe, you have they're like home cooked meals, and you get to the UK, and they're like buy out, right? You got it, right? Bag of crisps. Yeah, exactly. Fucking exactly. Buy out. Yeah. Ten, like ten pound buyout as well. You Every can't time. Get fucking anything. Exactly. If we get this done in time, I will buy you an Andos. Wow. My my gift to you guys. Wow. Thank you, bro. There's one very very close. I don't want to dox myself, but it's very close. Big Nando's fan. Huge Nando's fan. I'm really like, I'm getting back into Nando's. I was like, not off it, but. Now I'm like a twice a week guy. Nice. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, which is All right. pretty fucking insane. Uh, give me some free shit, Nando. Give me some fucking free shit. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> so, tour's going good. I got questions that are on my phone and it'd be rude to sort of get it out. So I'll just try and freestyle it. And All right. And when I run out of shit, then I'll get it. <laughs> um, it's... So... I want to talk to you first. We'll get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. I watched one of your videos. Oh, yeah. The first, the, it was the first time, literally the first time I've heard of your band. Mm-hmm. But what happened was someone was like, you'll love this band. And then I listened to it and I was like, oh, I do love this band. Let's watch the drummer. And I was like, oh, my God, it's fucking sick. And then I found that bit. The one that we missed. The, the one fucking <laughs> god scene that we so missed. If anyone doesn't know, there, I was watching a lovely Bryce playthrough. And I was like, this, I can't figure out. Obviously, it, 
you know, I've watched, I think I deep dived at the end of it. I've watched your live videos. You're a fucking machine. Thank you, bro. But then I was watching the videos. So I was like, this is fucking awesome. And then I went, oh my God, there were some snare drums that weren't. Wait. So what happened? Let's just, let's clear up why this happens. Because it happens all the fucking time. It does. So the way we did it was I tracked like the whole album in like nine, 10 days. And then, and at like the 10th day, we were going to do two or three playthroughs. And uh, the way I did it was just do four full takes of the song and then just comp it. So what it was, was it wasn't, you know, what you saw was what I played. The only problem was, is that I don't know if I was too stoned or what, but something happened to where there was definitely a decent amount of edits and I thought I had double checked and there was one, that one section where he had, he just guessed, you know, it's not his fault. He's not a drummer. So how would he know? But he put in a section that he thought was right. The just video get, guy or the, the audio video guy. guy. Oh, okay. The video guy. And the audio was right, but he chose the wrong video. So like we had a comp take. And then he had to find I mean I had to help him find every single take that was correct with the audio, but I missed that like one like where I did the blast, but you were like, wait a minute. It was, no blast. It was, it was, <laughs> it was devastating. I know, I know. But I went I went through the other shit. <laughs> Because you can see, you get to a certain... Fa- How old are you guys? You're young. I just turned 30. Yeah, I just Did turned you? 29. Yeah. I look like a little bean, yeah, though. That's fucking <laughs> little baby lookers. <laughs> no, like, I was looking through promo photos earlier, and I was like, everyone's like babies. Yeah, bro. But yeah, I'm up 30, 30. It's fine. But there's, it gets to a point when you're like, you can watch a drummer, and just see, even with the sound off, you can see the stick heights, and you be know. like, that guy's good, or yeah. that guy's faking it. Yeah. And there's a bunch of that shit out there. Oh, yeah. Um, but the other thing was... The quantizing thing, you were like, "Yeah, this is definitely quantized," was and it, it was mm. not a hundred. You know, not a hundred. But that's the thing. Like we were talking about this on the way. Like I really appreciate you doing that because I'm. So you can still talk. I'm just editing. Stuff. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, I really appreciate you doing that because, like, the reason that I had the video quantized was because Anthony Barone was the drummer in the band before I was, and Sh- on Shadow's official YouTube, they put out like two really, really sick playthroughs of him, quantized feet. Yep. At the very least, the feet were like definitely quantized. Hands, I'm not sure, but there was quantizing. So I was like, well, fuck. You know, like kids really, like the fans really loved him. Like when he came in, they were like, oh shit. And he's the, the record that he played on Melancholy, it's like his drumming is nuts. Yeah. He's a fucking he's insane a drummer. So I'm thinking like, yo, if I don't quantize this, kids aren't going to know that his was quantized, yeah. and they're gonna think you may, you I'm mean, a worse drummer. It's the right drummer. move. It's right. definitely the right move. But now that you did that, I was like, you know what, dude? Like, fuck it. Like, nah, why? But- why should I? Why can I not just practice more and you rip can't. a playthrough? It's not gonna be perfect, but it's. Yeah, but they 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 expect perfect now. That's this the is that is the problem, and I don't know what the answer is because ne- but because now it's going full circle as well. Where you've got kids like the infant annihilator shit. Like it's like it's obviously like to anyone who's a musician, it's like this is obviously a joke. Yeah. Like whatever. But there's kids that will now defend how fake it is, like the drums or whatever. I don't know if he's he's not as good as the audio, I know right. that much. Right. Because he's a human being. Right. But like there's kids that will defend it and be like, who care who cares if it's edited, who cares whatever? But it's like, the more I see that, the more I'm like, when AI metal comes, we're all fucked. Yeah. Bro. Because those kids will just want to type in really fast bit breakdown with symphonic orchestra. <laughs> yeah. Click. And then they go, I'm a genius. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a genius. And they're like, oh, this is amazing. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to leave the house. I don't have to go to a show. I don't have to fucking do whatever. Mm-hmm. So we're fucked. Exactly. So we need to, I don't know, I don't know what the answer is. What? <laughs> The answer is drum cams, like mm. camera audio dog shit. Yeah, dude. Like, I need to see something that sounds horrific mm-hmm. so I can really fucking tell. Do you get it with guitars? Well, so I was going to say, there's this guy, Charlie, uh, that does Buried Alive, like Ooh, spelled like Barry. I know. And apparently I, he can do it. So I've seen him live when he played for Reflections, incredibly impressed, thought he was fantastic. But the audio 
sorry if you hear this, but it's <laughs> recorded very fake. Like, like the way that the way the editing insane. is, I know what like note by note guitar takes sound like. Yeah, um, that's what it sounds like. And he posts raw videos too w- without that, but he says they don't do as well. The videos that get shared, yeah, see, the videos want- that get a lot of views, the videos that get shared by people like Sinister Gates and Tom Morello and the Superstar yeah. Guitars are the fake videos because they have greater production value. So he could do the raw videos and they would sound technically a little less tight, but it'd still be incredibly impressive to anyone yeah. that plays guitar. But the consequence is less views, less viral. And so he pretty much came to the conclusion like, I have to do the edited videos because they just do better. Why would I shoot my my career in the foot by, you know, it's not, like, not doing what's proven to be doing better? It's like performance capitalism. Yeah. It's yes. like, oh my God. It's like I, can, I can get the most amount of views by just being fucking fake, which, and you can't really fucking blame anyone. You blame the consumer right. for being like, yeah, I love this. You could make that. Yeah, you just need to know how to fucking do it, mm-hmm. and I don't know what the answer is. I was in a band of that shit before, like the fake guitar shit, and it, then we played shows live, and it was like the, oh, the bands we were on tour with it was like decapitated and aborted, and mm-hmm. they were like, "Oh, your band sucks!" Literally just said it to me. Like, really? Yeah, your band sucks, and I was like, Jesus "I know, <laughs> I know." And then I left, <laughs> and then I left like shortly afterwards. Holy fuck! Um. The um, while we're on, while we're on the subject, mm-hmm. is it, the orchestra stuff on the record. Is that that's VST? Yeah. Um, so every Are you rec- the guy. I'm the guy in the band that I guess does it. Um, but I always get like a second pair of ears and hands. Um, the first album, it was like the guy who actually mixed it, like added some layers. The second album. Is this girl we knew named Kelsey who um, also like added some extra layers, changed the VSTs, and then the last two albums, this guy Francesco who plays in Flesh God Apocalypse. I hear oh, them and I'm like, oh, this is real orchestra. Can you like do real orchestra on ours? And he's like, oh no, oh, no, 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 I do MIDI. I'm like, wait, what? I'm wow, like, I didn't I'll, know that. Yeah, it's all MIDI, and I'm like, and he teaches people. He taught this guy JD who played for Ice Nine Kills. Um, oh and, yeah. And now he's like a freelance producer. Um, but he teaches people it, but I'm like, yeah, it sounds real to me. Can you do that for our album? So I'll send him my MIDI, and same thing. He switches out the VSTs, velocities, modulations, adds extra layers, just makes everything I do more realistic. Um, oh, so I do on energy, it, it's fucking yeah, crazy. I good. do it, but he makes it like high fidelity, real, you know. Oh, that's it's so like I'll I'll do him. like the MIDI drums on the album, but he makes it like real, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Because the Flesh God shit's fucking crazy as well. It's crazy. It's amazing. I didn't know that was MIDI. MIDI. Yeah, I didn't believe it. I was like, this is a real choir. This is a real. It, yeah, it's like crazy convincing. Real violins. And he's like, no, 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 no. And yeah. I've skyped in that with, exact voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Italian. And I, I'll, I'll Skype with him, and he shows me what he does. He creates like these modulation curves. He layers things in a certain way. He'll even detune things because to a real orchestra real. wouldn't be hundred percent in tune. He'll mess up timing, like flams, similar to what you would do like on a drums. But it's, it's on like genius, if you want something to sound bigger with orchestra, you flam. You know where the notes land. Same concept. That's fucking sick. But you're the guy composing it, right? And he just fucking he makes it sexes it up. Yes, exactly. Nice. It's it's fucking great. Hats off to you guys. Thank it's you. Like bro. my I, my um my like my entry into my entry into extreme metal was from Metallica S and M. Like, I was a kid and I loved Metallica. And then it was like, oh, Metallica with an orchestra. I was like, let's see what this sounds like. And then I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. And then from there, I went immediately to Demi Borgit. Because I was like, what? Yes. Like, oh, I wonder if there's any other bands that do this. And I, I don't think by that point I'd ever even like heard a blast beat. Maybe mp3.com, I downloaded Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> yeah. Just to, after watching Ace Ventura. Exactly. And Same. then... Like, so, oh, I wonder if there's another band that does this and then got into Demi Borges. So my my soft spot is fast, 
blasts with some fucking oh yeah bro yeah yeah the first Jim and Borgir video like live video I ever saw I was like Next level. It's so annoying Incredible. there isn't like anything super pro shot of Dimu. Like, dude, Nick Barker's drum parts are so fucking did you hear legendary. I'm not stoked. I need to, I need to listen again. The, I don't know if I fully heard it. The Puritanical remix is like the, the best thing about Puritanical. We got, a, we got a TV show in the UK, right? You'll love it if you love that shitty accent. It's called, <laughs> it's called EastEnders, right? Okay. It's a soap opera. It's fucking dog shit, but like, <laughs> The the majority of the world has watched it. Uh, the majority of the UK has watched it at some point. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is like where at the end, there's like, you know, in the soap opera, there's like something happens. And then the soap opera ends and it's like, oh, you've got to tune in next week for whatever. So it'd be like, oh, you fucking what, you slag? You fucking left the kettle on and it burnt the house down. And then the little, the tagline, the musical tagline is this, these like MIDI drums that go doo. Do, 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 do. I really want to pull it up. There must be a way that I can pull it up. But like, <laughs> Dimmu Borgir is the same samples. <laughs> so it's mm. like, I don't know if it is like specifically, but I think it's like Elisa's D4 or something. Like just right. AE's drum sound samples. And when I listened to Puritanical before they remixed it, it was like someone just took the EastEnders fill and just sped it up. <laughs> There's loads of those fills that go... <laughs> Fucking perfect. <laughs> Unbelievable. Perfect dude. music. Unbelievable. If you're listening from America, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to pull my notes out. you got a sold out tour. It's very fucking nice. You've got a lovely album, Elegy. When did that come out? Last year. January, yeah. Ooh, like a year ago exactly now. A year ago. Yeah, it's probably, we're about tomorrow, right? The 13th today. Could be, yeah. Four, oh, a year tomorrow. Anniversary. Ooh. Was it... I mean, your band got, I can see your band's got much bigger here since then. What's the, what's the deal? Like, every time you come here, can I sell out? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. This is our first time here, you know? Um, Who, who's in? You've never been. This is Shadow Intense's first time here. We've been with other bands, yeah. but Shadow's never he been. Played in, yeah, he played in the Faceless. They did here. I, I play in a band called Currents still, and Currents has been here four <sighs> times. Fuck me, you guys are in a million bands. What what bands are you currently in right now? Uh Currents and Shadow Wind. I'm I mainly just do this. There's like and you're singing. Oh yeah. I have a solo project where I sing and play drums. But that's like those are like the two main things I focus on. I still have, you know, some like side projects that just want to make music that probably won't play shows really, you know? But yeah. it's mainly just this and then I want to focus First on the tour is sold out. It's insane. That's fucking so sick. It's been crazy, bro. Like, like insane. I've d I've cried multiple times. Nice for real. Happy, happy. Cry. Oh yeah, like yeah, like uh, Netherlands, dude. Biggest show we've ever played as a band. Four, fourteen, thirteen hundred people or fourteen. Uh, thirteen hundred tickets sold. Yeah, thirteen hundred people. So I'll, you're I'll sold out as well. Uh, I mean, not every show. Close. Yeah, not every show is sold out, but. By the end of the tour, we're hoping to hit like eighty percent of the tour sold out. Yeah, there was a bunch. There was a decent amount of upgrades. Yeah, so we had to upgrade so, like, some venues. Some of the upgrades didn't sell out, so the initial venue sold out. But the upgrade, you know, just got Fuck. yeah decent. That's fucking cool. Yeah, it's amazing. What was the Netherlands venue? Was it Dynamite? Uh, it was called uh, oh, Podium Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Where was it? Where it's was in Tilburg. Tilburg. Um, there's weed there. <laughs> can be weed there. There was, mate. <laughs> there was, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Not today. Not today, mate. But Not today. Right. No weed. I tried twice. Uh, Didn't happen. Imagine everyone on camera. Imagine we're in California for a minute. I've got edibles. There you go. Go. I found out. Uh, I live in Connecticut now. I was born and raised in Texas. Moved to Connecticut like a year ago to be closer to them. On this tour, it became legal. So when I get home, I'm just gonna I could just walk into it. I, oh, like the first stores have opened? Yeah, like when we get back, I can just go into a store and okay. buy it. Why'd you move to Connecticut from Texas? Um I needed a change of pace for sure. Like I was known like I was in so many bands there and uh there was this place in Dallas called Deep Ellum, you know, one. trees, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, 
I'd played there so many times and it it honestly like after covid it's just gotten so bad with shootings yeah. and stabbings and shit man like no, I wasn't playing local shows anymore like at all I was just leaving all the time to go on tour I was flying out like so I started playing for them my first tour was September October 2019 and since then before I moved I'm I'm flying out like 6 to 8 times a year and they have to spend money on that and I'm like I don't really like come like I miss my friends but I don't really like coming all the way back here like I feel like it would be smarter for me to like make a big move and like mm. this is my career this is I love this band I'm going to be in this band I should probably be closer to them figured it out dude vocalist Ben let me live with him for a couple months and now I live with my girlfriend that we've been dating over a year up there it's fucking sick just better to be closer to them for writing they'd have to waste so much like to write they'd have to fly me out to write it's like waste of money bro i mean i do it but i also we just do it at the end of a tour so okay we're just like fucking because are, are they I'll all new york over there. you're yeah. the only everyone was new york but now like tom is nashville drew's still new york okay and neck is new jersey and then i'm scotland God. so we just like <laughs> we'll book like three months of touring at a time and then i'll fly out and we'll do a bit of writing Mm. Uh, it's cool I like the like the change of pace like I get to go and travel a bit or mm. whatever but it is fucking annoying like you must have it harder as well because I don't know how how are you uh, you're a little freak but like <laughs> I can't in a nice way but like yeah. if I've slept badly I play like fucking dog shit so coming flying over and starting a tour is like the first three shows where I'm acclimatizing I'm always bad yeah so I can't imagine what it's like if you have to actually play fast I see what's I'm like fucking weird dude like it doesn't make any sense like <laughs> I'm so, fucking weird we're talking back home I, I have to figure out a place to be able to play drums but for the past year I haven't since I've lived in Connecticut I haven't had a place to play drums or practice no. so I haven't practiced at all and then you just rip it and you just show up and rip because you fucking have to like you know I'll I'll do I do what I can like practice pad stuff at home like at at where I live, but that's not the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not even the same. So I just show up and I like I leg- dude. I don't warm up before I play. It I makes me worse. You. It makes me worse. Like if I do pad stuff or or feet stuff, it, I'll get tired. I I'll take a nap and wake up from the fucking nap and rip an energy drink and we're ripping. How long have you been playing the drums for? Since I was two. <laughs> There's the answer. But that's why. It's like I, I it's never had a two. choice. I never had a choice. Oh. <laughs> that's the fucking. There it is. The ghost of Christmas past. Yeah. Um, since you were two years old. Mm-hmm. So like that's the well, thing. No, like, no, I never no. had a choice. Stop. Like this is all I know. Stop it. I'm trying to visualize. I don't know what two year olds look like these days. I'm not one of those guys, <laughs> right? But like two. Aren't they just fucking shitting on the floor and walking, not even walking around? When did you walk? I, I you was, walk I was, wa- I was two and a half technically, but I was walking and my parents told me this story and I actually have, they videoed it and I've seen the video. So this is the only reason that I know this is true. The Eagles were on TV. Yeah. They're playing get over it. Yeah. And I, and I remember seeing like Don Henley in this sick ass like DW kit and just like, I was feeling the beat. And my parents are just sitting there watching TV. I fucking go into the kitchen and drag in two stools and two spoons. And I just got, and I'm like right on the beat apparently. Two two years old. And they're like, yo, what the fuck? (laughs) And then the next song comes on, same thing. I'm right there. And they're like, yo. And my mom was a vocalist and pianist and flute player. My dad was a guitarist. My sister is a piano. It's, like, it's my, in my grandfather the is like egg. my grandfather. My mom's dad is a composer. Has over three hundred published works. So it's like it's in my bones, you know. It's crazy. And so they saw that and they were like, "We got to buy this kid a drum set." So like that next Christmas, they got me a drum set, and it was like, "That's it. That's this insane. is all I've ever known, bro." It's that's it's crazy. Weird. It, that's weird. Like. Not only because you were like fucking two, but like <laughs> that's weird to think that maybe it is like in the genes. I'm telling you. Well, this is very fascinating to me actually. Because I asked my mom, I was like, I do believe that it's in the genes, but I was like, I don't believe that you did nothing. I was like, 
you had to have done something. And she's like, I'll tell you what I think it was. She was like, as soon as I knew that I was pregnant. Sorry, I, reading. I put, she put headphones on her fucking stomach. Demi Borgia. Like, re- all this shit. Like, Led Zeppelin. Tons of different stuff. And, and would tap the fucking beat on her stomach. And I was like, yo, you literally injected me with, like, that's fucking crazy, crazy. bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so I'm like, I, if she wouldn't have done that, who knows what would have happened. But it's like, it's honestly insane. Well, my parents love music, but they're not musicians, so I have to warm up. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it, not only that, but if I don't warm up, I'm terrible. What's your warm up? So I almost think of it more like practice because I know there's like parts of the set that I'm inconsistent on. I'm not nailing every night so i just kind of grab the practice amp and hit those parts you know start slow work it back up um mainly solos yeah mainly solos or just tiring picking parts so just making sure to like and i don't get to do this every night it depends on like the venue layout and stuff but um yeah i just try to hit the parts of the set i know are harder for me and iron them out a bit that's pretty much like half time usually too like and then sped I'll, up yeah i'll start half time and work it up i like doing that when i'm trying to hammer home a bit yeah my brain just is not as fast as it needs to be so i just go over and over at half speed and, yeah and, and just something just clicks yeah. look, look always look for tension i'm sure you have to think oh, about that I'm, as well i'm fucking tense yeah. i had a dream the <laughs> other day right i had a dream the other day where thomas lang was teaching me how to like Change the tension of my heart while I was playing, what? and he was completely naked when he was doing it, and it was such a weird dream. But then I woke up and I went and play, I went to play the drums, and I was like <laughs> weirdly thinking about that, and I, you know I can't obviously can't tense my heart, but like I was I was like thinking about it, and it made my practice. I had more intention with my practice. It was weird. It was just like visited. By naked Thomas Lang. Yeah, just think about naked Thomas Lang before you play now. It's fucking it's something wrong with my brain. <laughs> um, That's so funny. So I can't believe you don't warm up. That was literally going to be. I was hoping to get some fucking gems from you. But well, that—that's the thing. Like, I have, I have, I've tried so many different things. I've tried warming up for thirty minutes, twenty, fifteen, ten, five, from trial and error. Literally, just like. Taking a nap, drinking water, and drinking energy before What's I play. What's your energy drink choice? It used to be Bang, but that CEO was like, "Yeah, what happened there?" I'm gonna <laughs> right. zoom in on so, that face. <laughs> I'm just saying right now, dude. I'm. I, I might be inaccurate with this, but I don't think I am. They were sued by Monster. Bang was. I remember this. Yeah. I think I can't. It's just like it's so stupid. I'm pretty sure he literally claimed that the super creatine in Bang cures autism, Doc. I think he literally said that. And Monster was like, "Yeah, that's exactly what we were waiting for." There's no way that's true. And fucking dropped the hammer. Yeah, yeah. three hundred million dollar lawsuit. And they, then, they won. And they checked it, and I remember it had no creatine none. in it whatsoever. Let alone this magical autism. Exactly, creatine. none. That's fucking crazy. So I feel definitely feel scammed. Uh, but I do, Wait, were I, you drinking it to cure something? <laughs> no, I just I was like it was my favorite energy too. drink. It was like I had I had like two because it's like a lot of caffeine. And my thing used to be two bangs a day. Like how I, much caffeine's in a bang? Three hundred milligrams. Nice. So six hundred milligrams a day. I that's all I'm, I need. I think I'm on a gram a day. I think I'm busting out like a how gram. Much, how much is it? like a thousand milligrams? Jesus. Because I'll do. I wake up and I'll have. A black filter coffee, but like a jug of it, which is like, you know, I'm on 300 there. And then within two hours, I go to the gym. Pre-workout's got at least 350 in it. Oh, yeah. So what? That's nearly... And then I'll have another two coffees. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But I listened to a podcast the other day, because I listen to podcasts, um, <laughs> about how if you're, if you're like a custom, like caffeine acclimatized, then... It doesn't really have any of the negative effects at all, and you can just fucking ride it. Yeah. It's not like alcohol. Like you can you can stop and you'll get a headache, mm. but it's not like alcohol where you stop and yeah, exactly. Like withdrawal. Yeah, you're literally dying. Yeah. <laughs> Drinkers, 
Not at all. <sighs> only a... only weed and mushrooms, brother. Only sometimes. Mushroom. <laughs> Mushroom chat. Are you a weeder? No weed? Occasional. Okay, yeah, occasional. My brain doesn't like it. I'm yeah, a very I think occasional. it makes mm. me a less uh, useful person. It makes me terrified yeah. of my own brain. I feel that. It put mushrooms through the opposite. Yes. Like, I had a few mushroom times where I'll be, I'm quite generally quite an anxious person anyway, mm -hmm. but I've had a few mushroom times where I'd start like an anxious thinking while I'm, you know, fucking pretty fucking high. <laughs> yeah. And then my brain will like listen to my brain. And there's like two brains in there going, well, the reason that you're anxious about this is because this thought led to that, led to that, led to that. So just don't do that. And then I, my brain teacher. just goes, gink. Boom. It was literally the one's golden teachers as well. Yeah. That's what my fucking Mikey, our merch guy, who's like a shaman, shaman, was like... They're golden teachers. And then the, the specific anxiety that I had there was like gone. Yep. But then on the same tour, I, on the same tour, I smoked DMT. It was fucking the best thing on earth. You ever smoked DMT? Oh, craziest 15 minutes of your life, dude. Crystal or pen? <laughs> Crystal. There's a pen. You see, <laughs> there's a pen. There's a pen. Yo. It's fucking crazy. Obviously in a legal state, which doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> um, there's a pen. Some guy in Detroit. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say some guy in Detroit. I know exactly who he is. I'm not gonna fucking name him. It was like, oh, I got a cartridge. You guys wanna hit it? And then we were like, yeah, okay then. And he was like, I warn you, it's DMT. And I was like, what? Like DMT and weed? And he was like, no, it's DMT. And I was like, okay, well, no. But can we buy it off you? And then that night, that's a real podcast when you talk about DMT. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> night, we sat on the bandwagon. I'm sure you've been on a bandwagon in your time. You, you got the two, like in the seating area, the two fucking couches just facing each other. Yeah. Rip this pen. It's just just a cart, like 510 cartridge pen, but you need one of the, you know, the ones you can change the heat. Yes. You need one of those and you whack it on the highest heat. Okay. And take just like three fucking big, big, big hits on it. And everyone's like, oh, you have such a mystical learning experience. Oh, no. I like left this realm. Shoot like everything the says the fucking world yeah. ripped apart or whatever. Yeah, like but shoot then, out of a cannon shit. But then when I came back, my friends that were on the couch in front of me were all Simpsons hit and run characters. <laughs> like N <laughs> N64 <laughs> graphics. Sick. And like, I was just laughing my, like no lesson learned. I was just like <laughs> maniacally fucking laughing. Like you guys are Simpsons hit and run characters. And then apparently I was screaming, it's like crack and acid had a baby. <laughs> And That's like, pretty accurate. Tom, our guitarist, is straight edge and was just yeah. like head in his hands while I'm fucking screaming about oh, no. it being crack and LSD <laughs> at the same time. Would recommend, though, to yeah. be honest. I mean, obviously not. I, I'll take it back. But, um, <laughs> not to kids, mate. No, 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 no. no. If, you're an adult, if, you're, if you've got this far in the podcast, you know I always talk about shit like that. Exactly. You got anyone in your band that's teetotal? Wait, what? Teetotal means uh, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke straight edge, basically. Damn, I've never heard that. UK straight edge, yeah, no. teetotal. teetotal. None of that. Teetotal. No. No one. No. Got anyone who's a degenerate? Is it you? Me Me and Ben smoke a lot of weed, for sure. Like, as any, much as possible. Any it's negative like, effects from it? Uh, I have to... It's, it's like a similar thing. Like, if I... It can make me lazy if I let it. But it kind of does, it's weird. It's like a lot of people, it'll make them like lethargic and lazy. Weed like gets me like hyped. Like it gets me like driven. Like I'm like, I feel fucking good. I was like, let's do like everything that I can do right now. You know what I mean? It's so crazy. So it's, it's honestly weird like on the tour because we we're talking about this. I was talking about this with the other drummers. Because uh, the drummer of Angel Maker, Steven, same thing, he's from New York, t t like, s sweetest kid in the world, total weed head too, like, he smokes, like, all day, every day. So when we get over here, we're like, I was like, I don't even think I remember the last show I've played Not Stoned. So we get here, and it's like, 
playing sober is like a different high. Like being sober, I would like overthink and almost forget a part. And it's like, what? Yeah. It's like the opposite. Yeah, that's weird. It's fucking weird. Um, <laughs> I believe there's an actual term for it, which is called state. I think it's called state dependence. Mm. And it's when you when you practice something or you you do even like gym or anything like that, and you do it with it, with a certain mental state, whether it's whether it's like a self made mental state. I'm definitely butchering what the terminology is, <laughs> but like whether it's a self made mental state or a drug induced mental state mm -hmm. but you get used to playing like that so when you don't play it, it's a bit weird it's exactly. kind of like me with i have to drink like two beers before i play really not like for nerves no not even nerves just like i can't really yeah everyone the like almost like the fucking edited shit people are, like expect a performance from drummers especially like metalcore drummers yeah. and like i don't spin my sticks no. And I don't do, I don't do the show pony shit. But if I have two drinks, I'll stand up. I'll okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll like. I'll stand, I'll stand up. I'll jump around. I'll shout. I'll do the Lars thing. But if I do it sober, I'm like, especially if it's like, if it's like an underperforming show where it's like the room's half full, mm -hmm. I am successful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, if it's like an underperforming show, it's like you got to give them the same show. Yes. But I can't because I'm in a bad mood. Exactly. Because of, not because of the people who are there who are it's getting the, the brunt of it's this. The people who aren't the people who aren't there are the fucking problem. <laughs> and they're why I drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Makes sense. How'd you get Chuck Billy? What's the story there? Yeah, yeah. Really cool story. It's cool as fuck. So, really cool. yeah, I'm a Testament fan forever. One of the first bands I ever heard. Um, and so I definitely have to thank my fiance a bit or a lot, a ton. Um, so her, <laughs> her great uncle is named John Zazula. John Zazula founded Met uh, Megaforce Records, which put no out fucking way. Put out first Metallica records, Anthrax records, Testament records. And we'd go on vac before he passed, we'd go on vacation, uh, like once or twice a year down to Florida. Um, Super great guy, super nice, and I would, we would sit outside um, with his dogs, and like I would show him like new bands, and he, like the best things you showed me were animals as leaders and septic flesh. You're showing the like the guy from Megaforce, right? Yeah, the guy who like Metallica septic lived flesh. with for like a year before they started. <laughs> yeah, I know all um, that shit. <laughs> yeah, it, I I loved that guy. He was great. Um, but I, you know, sort of let slip. There's like. Big, I don't know how, because I, I didn't want to like ask a wrong way, but I, I was, I tried, I was like curious. It's like, I literally don't even remember what I said, but I was pretty much expressed to him that it would be cool to get Chuck Billy on a song. I don't know what that would look like, if he would even want to do it. I tried being as like nice and just roundabout as I could. Um, I was like, yeah, yeah. He made it happen. Like he he got in touch with him. I got on the phone with Chuck. Um, put together a budget that we were both comfortable with, and yeah. And I got on the phone with Chuck Billy. He's like, "Yeah, so what what are you thinking for this?" I was like, "Well, here's the lyrics." Um, That's cool. And I was just like, "Yeah, do some some like your low shit, like your your heavy shit, man." Yeah, he made it happen. Sent me the files, and I have like Chuck Billy's files on my com studio computer, <laughs> isolated. I'm like, yeah, you know, so yeah, that's fucking yeah awesome. I was so stoked. So yeah, definitely. Oh, my fiance and her great uncle John, rest in peace, a lot for you know making that happen. That's fucking sick. The song fucking rules as well. Because I was listening to it. I listened to it in the gym today as well. Really, and then I was like, because it's on. I don't know if you know. It's, I have like a gym playlist. And it's on my gym playlist. But I never really, like, looked who it was because I was like, I recognize that voice. I'm mm -hmm. really bad at, like, song names. I'm really bad at looking at my, like, fucking while I'm in the gym is when I, I listen to heavy music in the gym. And then all other times it's lo-fi or oh. fucking Studio Ghibli piano music. Mm -hmm. Really? Like, yeah, that's literally what I listen to. Oh, that's sick. Um, so, like, 
then today I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay, I've got to find out who it is. And I'm looking, it's like Chuck Billy. My brain goes, obviously it's Chuck Billy. Yeah. But it's not like, I can't think of, I can't think of another song that I think of him guesting on that I listen to actively. It's quite a cool, like, you didn't get, and not that he's bad or anything, he's fucking very, very fucking good, but it's not like Will from Lorna Shaw or like Courtney from Spirit Box, which are like, they're amazing, but they're right. also the label going, get these people to guest on your album, it's going to push sales. Right, exactly. Respect. This is like OG legend shit. It was yeah. like really cool. I was like blown away that that was possible, dude. That's probably, honestly, that's probably my, I think that's collectively our, all of our favorite songs. Yeah. Like our favorite song from the album. That's probably my, the one I'm looking forward to most playing tonight because it's got like ADHD as fuck. Symbol fills like the whole song. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah it was definitely so much to match. Bro. Important to get features that you don't see a lot. Yeah. Phil Bozeman's the other feature on the album and like, I know he's done... Tony Tap Dance Extravaganza, but I honestly couldn't tell you many other stuff he's featured on. Yeah, so which is weird because he's got a fucking... Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, we felt like him and um, Chuck were, like, good choices because Chuck definitely, I like, I think he just did Lamb of God, and Lamb of God's song came out first. And I was like, fuck, I thought we were the only ones, but it's all it's all good. Um, <laughs> um, but... Yeah. yeah, but Lamb of God's more like his realm. Like, it's exactly. not a left field one. Right. Yeah. It was very left field. I don't think anyone really wanted it as bad as I did. It was like everyone doing me a favor, like a childhood favor. You know? I think it turned out great. Though. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. sounds like incredible. Okay, so the Late to Rest cover as well. Is that was that deluxe version only, or is that on the actual record? It's deluxe. Yeah, it was released as a single before, but... The plan was always to like do a deluxe version later, where that and the bonus track both appeared. It's fucking on. so sick! Dude, like hearing yeah. like like blasts in it yes. and fucking really fast yes. double kick. Yeah, as a kid, like I was so glad when he wanted to do that because I heard that song on like Guitar Hero. But like, I, why the fuck are you playing Sabian? Though? I mean, I'm I'm a my favorite company is Zildjian. That's what I'm like trying for right now. But you're playing? Are you playing Sabian? I am, but. I played Zildjian from two to like twenty one, and then I I just broke them all, and I I was broke. I couldn't afford any more, and I had a friend that had a Sabian deal, yeah. and he was like, "Yo, I can get you symbols for my my price if you just give give me the money." And so I mean, I basically just one at a time went over to Sabian, literally only because it was what I could afford. But to me, Zildjian is like my favorite. And Minel's amazing too, but I'm Zildjian's what I want. Tama, since I was three if you, years if old, you, you haven't got it. other than AC ACD. I only it? have sticks and pedals. What's ACD, sticks? Uh, Los Cabos. I like well, them. I like them a lot. Well, I don't know anything about them. Canadian, so good wood. I was about I literally <laughs> open my Maple fucking wood. mouth to yeah. say good wood. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you got any like inroads with those two? Well, that's I do. Um, like, my best friend in the world is Clay from Polyphia, the drummer. Yeah. Like, best friend. Um, I know I'm friends with, like, four different people. All of all of their rep is Sam Gamble. Sam Every, Gamble everyone. Is I have the fucking man. I've heard that from everyone. I just... And, like, with Zildjian, like, Matt Griner, like, we played with them not long ago. I already had... I've already submitted my application because I got recommended from... Uh, the old drummer of Devil Driver recommended me. Got me in the email chain. Matt Griner's trying to get me in as well. I just have, I don't have an EPK still. So I'm I trying don't to. I think you so really need one. I, You're I fucking know. fucking selling out all these shows. I know, but Matt, like Matt Griner was like, I already sent my application. Matt Griner was like, yo, I'll do what I can to help. Just email me your EPK. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, but he's all, no offense, he's also old. Yeah. Like, true. <laughs> but he's like, EPK for Zildjian? EPK shit is up there. Yeah. I just, that's the thing, like, I just I know, haven't seen one in years. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't, but you know, I mean, I just feel like if I have something that lists all Here's the accomplishments. EPK. Here's your fucking you know EPK I mean? right now. I'm right. fucking Eric Gross from Zildjian, which who is the guy who is a fucking legend. Because mm -hmm. I deal with him on uh, with Vic Firth because of the same company. Right. Um, Brilliant. 
Here's your, here's your EPK right now. Let me go on your page. 12. Oh, there's a K. There's a K next to his number, which is cool. There's the band. Let me click on the band. Uh, 101,000 followers. Okay, this guy can have some symbols. That's how it fucking goes. That, we'll get that. Guess what? Eric fucking loves the downbeat. That's fucking locked in now. <laughs> That's fu- and I'll get in trouble for my normal. <laughs> you can't you. say that. <laughs> I, I like, do you know what? I, I always say it. It's like I have my number ones, but then I have my number twos. Yeah. So my number one is Tama. Yeah. My All number day. two is DW. Same for me. My entire the, life, it's been the same. The thing with the, the Tama, the Walnut Birch, like the latest one. So I did a couple of things and I, I got Nolly to mix it and he was like, this sounds, did you record this on a DW? And I was like, no. And he was like, it sounds exactly like a DW. And I was like, oh, that's why I love it. Like, it sounds, weirdly, it sounds like a Maple DW. <laughs> a huge Dream Theater fan, Mike Portnoy, uh, Blake Richardson, Tama dudes, all day. Fell in love with that. So I'm, I figured, I was like, I know it's hard to get an endorsement, but it helps if you have the gear. So after two, after two tours ago, I bought that limited that limited edition uh gold like matte oh, gold I hardware it. i remember dming you immediately <sighs> i got that shit dude oh my god that's the best kit i've ever fucking played in my life was Is it unwrapped the first time at my place or you had already cracked it no i unwrapped it once but that was the first time I'd ever played it. Was it? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Is that a Walnut Birch as well? It is. Yeah, because I remember what happened because I just got my new kit before that, before they announced that. Mm-hmm. And like it comes out and then I messaged Sam and I was like, what the fuck? I'm so annoyed. I know. <laughs> I, I fucked up, right? Because I got, I got this kit for the UK, which I love. It matches our album artwork. It's a fucking Ooh. my favorite fucking color. And then Sam said, oh, like, this is how sick he is. Sam hits me up and he's like, oh, you got a US tour coming up. Yeah, you need a kit. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, what do you want? And dumb me goes, ah, oh, just exactly the same thing again. No! So I have two of the same fucking kit, which is sick for like, I guess for like the aesthetic or whatever, but I could have had anything. <laughs> oh, see, Clay messaged me yesterday. He's finally gets to do that. He's been with them for six six years i think now and he's getting to do his first fully custom kit now that's fucking he's like cool. so stoked I'm like, Fuck. twitch was my i no one took me seriously on and mine all took me seriously but no one took me seriously until the twitch thing happened and it was like i did a stream to like four hundred thousand people on the front page of twitch and i was Yo. playing this old tama kit and, but every other comment was like, this kit sounds amazing. What kit is that? And then it, the stream ended and everything. And I was like, I should have a free kit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, I'd never spoke to Sam before. Uh-huh. And I like got his number and I FaceTimed him. I was like, hey, we never met. I'm a Tama art, well, a Tama artist. The thing is, when you, when you live in a country that is outside the, the big ones, like Japan right. and America for Tama, right. like you're, you're an artist, but you're not like really an artist until the the u.s rep right knows who you are so i was like hi we never met blah blah, blah. basically i'm playing uh, and i in my head i was like because actually dw had contacted me in the interim and that's the only other company that i'd be like oh maybe yeah. um but the dw thing was more of the same it was like oh the the euro distributor will will give you a kit and then We'll go from there with the US thing. It's like, I want to be part of like a fucking family. I don't want to be like yeah. just the guy getting a free drum kit. No. So then I went into the Tama phone call with with I might leave Tama because I'm I'm doing this streaming stuff. But I'd never spoke to the guy before. I started reeling off the Twitch stuff and before I've even had to throw a card like I'm you know, I might leave. He just went, What do you want? And I, that in a nice way, not yeah. as fucking rude as that. He was like, what do you want? And I was like, a drum, a drum kit, please, <laughs> please, yeah. please can I have a drum kit? <laughs> and then he was like, yeah, what do you want? Do you want a star kit? And it was just like, you, like, yeah. But then I went business brain because I was like, realistically, for, for this to be like a two-way street thing, no one who's coming into my Twitch streams or my Instagram can afford a star kit. No. Like, I would love one. They sound fucking incredible, yeah. but like what's the mid-range pro kit and star then the Walnut Birch Star Classic and then I got it and I fucking I actually prefer it to the sound of the stars 
then people buy it because of me and it was like a good business decision. You do. You actually prefer it to the sound of a star. Yeah, uh, the star walnut's fucking amazing, but like you're going to hate, you might hate this because you're a guitarist and guitarists fucking love it, but miss me with Babinga. Yeah. Me, like, I don't blame you, man. I, I, everyone's like, I'm, oh, I'm kind sense. of glad it's, it's like endangered now because... <laughs> And no one's ever said, I'm kind of glad Sorry. the environment yeah, is fucked. That sounds so <laughs> fucked, but like, you know what I mean? It was like everyone had, God, I get a birch babing it, babing it. It was like the thing. I just don't like but, the way it sounds. Yeah. It's like, and I, everyone says, oh, it's so like, it's like someone marketed it because it's an incredibly dense word. This is fucking nerdy. Yeah. It, it's a super dense word. Someone went, oh, that means it's low in pitch. And then, <laughs> But the problem with that is because it's so dense, the fundamental note for the same plies actually is higher. Yeah. Whether or not the woods, you know, it makes a lower note, the amount of wood that you use to make the drum ends up, it's like I had to tune all my drums higher to get them to resonate. Right. And then I didn't like them, but everyone's like, oh, babinga, bro. I don't blame Fuck you. babinga. Fuck all the animals in the tr babinga trees <laughs> that are... <laughs> They're part of this. They're Sorry. They're part of <laughs> Big Babinga. I don't, I don't believe that. I recycle. <laughs> this can will be recycled. If you're an energy drink company, look, we talked about energy drinks. That could be your that could be your drink. Instead, it's Fanta, which is probably owned, it's owned by Coca-Cola. Oh, I didn't know that. You heard of those? Wow. They've done some shit. You used to have Coke in it. Got any Coke? <laughs> Got any Coke? <laughs> I stopped doing coke. Anyway, let me get to my, <laughs> let, let me get get to my notes. Everything like everything about your band, everything I'm trying to do with the podcast, it, it, which I shoot myself in the fucking foot with it, is like try and not ask all the same fucking questions. Yeah. You like guys like Halo? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just not gonna. Like that. How many times have we been fucking asked that? I'm just gonna. Like, <laughs> but but I, what I want to do is like segue off of these things. Mm -hmm. I I. I sort of try and style this off as being super professional, but it's actually the complete opposite. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask on the flip side of that is like on tour, because in my head I think games or whatever, mm -hmm. but instead I'll just ask a better question. On tour, what are you doing like recreationally, like day in the life? What did you do before we met today? What's your like chill out thing that you do? What do you do on days off? You first. Yeah, today, <laughs> I mean, this tour is just work because, you know, we're headlining, so we got to build our light rig and audio rig and stage at the start of the day. Um, You're doing that yourself, so you don't have a... a yeah, our bass player's building the lights. I build the audio. Bryce builds the drums. Um, DIY. Help with lights. Yeah, yeah. we have, we have a... A merch guy, at least, and tour manager, front of house guy, Mello. If you ever tour with Mello, um, Mello's here tonight. Oh yeah, yes, bro. oh yeah. Oh, I'm getting fucked up. Yeah, yeah. he was st he was stoked to hear <laughs> he that you were stoked. coming. So um, sick. Yeah. Um, Great sound guy. And yeah, it's yeah, nice that amazing. we have some crew, but like it's a it's a busy day. So I personally feel like there's not a whole lot of downtime. But like on a U.S. tour, I like to get a little gym in little I'm, I'm a foodie so i try to eat something fat <laughs> nice. trying to be a little less fat this tour but in general <laughs> like give me something fried you know um as easy, yeah, easy just, to do in your country just i love it it's my so favorite easy. Shit. i love it eat work out be on laptop that's, See, that's the joke it. the european joke is just call it the land of inconvenience it, we like to call it it's not possible <laughs> yeah. it, it's not no. possible. Yes. Do, you, do, you, do you think there's any way we could get some ice back here? Oh, I'm sorry. Not possible. I'm sorry. It's not. But what? It's not racist because they're white, and you can't be racist to white people. Right. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's not possible. How? I, I just asked for electricity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not possible. Yeah. We're playing in 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry, it's not possible. <laughs> but what is possible is a fucking banquet feast of food when you get there, which right. is incredible. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why it doesn't translate to the UK. Like, why don't we, why aren't we nice? I know. We, I mean, we're nice, but it's just like the complacency. If anyone doesn't know, we go to Europe, mainland Europe, you get treated, like you, you turn up, you wake up, 
oh, the venue's already open. You go in, there's fresh coffee, tea, sometimes a breakfast, a fucking old school like medieval banquet style Game of Thrones <laughs> food selection and then a hot meal. And you come to the UK... And it's literally a bag of crisps. It's not even a meme. Yeah, it's yeah, not bro. even a meme. I saw you post it the other yeah. day. Yeah. Why? Literally just chips. And if you can make a sandwich, good luck. Yeah. That's the yeah. US too, though. Yeah, true. Where, where you we're have to beg to for that. a fucking water in the US. You know what I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. And then it comes through on the fucking invoice. And it's like, like <laughs> <Yeah>. $400 <laughs> for the fucking bottled water. It makes no sense, bro. Absolutely insane. What you, what's your perfect perfect day? Uh, don't give me your perfect anything because we're going to mm. do a dream festival in a minute. Ooh. It's where we're going to get real fucking beautiful. I want to get into this oh, foodie question, situation. Yeah, yeah, question yeah. real quick. Go on. Allowed to vape or no? What are you vaping? Nicotine. Should we, did you know what Alex from Malev asked me yesterday and I said, I don't know if it's going to set a sprinkler off. Oh, it won't. I'll blow it on the ground. Here's the thing. Every venue we go into says no smoke. All right, do it, but blow it directly at that camera for content All right. needs. And if the sprinklers go off, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Beautiful. Disappears, man. Perfect. Yeah. What flavor is it? Blueberry, blueberry, cherry, cranberry. Just fucking take three different fucking things. Very, yeah. very fucking yeah, explosion. Just, just call it, yeah. All the colors of the rainbow. What are you doing on a, on a day off? So for me, I... I don't eat much. I'm like, honestly, like almost the opposite. It's like super funny. I eat, Even when you're stoned. Oh, yeah. I, I usually, like no joke, on tour. Are you or, an alien? <laughs> maybe. Go on, carry yeah, on. Actually, yeah. Um, two things. at home, Like whether I'm at home or on tour, I normally like to eat one meal a day after the, at the end of the day. So like after the show's over, Normally, I you like... You will play a set with no food in you. Most of the time. There is something wrong Because with you. And this is the thing. That it's like, this is literally insane, and I'm aware of this. But ever since I was 14 or 15 years old, I've only eaten one meal a day. And I've, like, because of, like, drumming and stuff, I would, I've trained myself in my brain that food is, for, for me, food is not like, you need this for fuel. Food is like, this is your reward when you finish the shit that you have to fucking do. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So got, when I play a show, I fuck, I fucking, oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've earned the food after the sh- set. And then I enjoy it so much because I'm like, I fucking earned this so shit. So what about or if that? I, I thought or we like, were going to Or like, oh, no, we can do that. But like, I'll, I'll, I can't have a full meal. It has to be split up. So I'll get it. I'll eat a little, like just a little bit. Take it to go at the, at the end. It. Finish it off. Well, you don't have to go to Nando's. No, I would, I would love to go. I love Nando's. What's your eating before show situation? Oh, he loves it. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> we will take out this uh, guy as crew sometimes. Andrew Kim. None of the guys like to eat like ever. So he, ha- I have to have like crew be my food buddy because none of my band is down to eat. That's I'm like, God, it makes God. no sense. Everyone in Currents is always down to eat all the time, but these guys are just one meal a day pretty much. So it like, makes no sense. So I'm well, like, well, I, it's one o'clock. Let's eat. And everyone's like, no, nah, man, I'm good. So I'm like, this early? All right. I can't even imagine eating right now. That's fucking insane. But I, like, I, like I, here's the other thing too. It, it would be weird for me to go to the gym because I don't fucking eat. So it's like, that's probably wouldn't be good. But I still. I mean, you go to, you, you drum like you're in the fucking right. gym. So. so that takes it. But something I do really like to do is I always do like push-ups and planks on tour. That's my working out. And the only other thing is, dude, I'm obsessed with like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande. That's what I listen to. So I ha- like I have to sing on tour. Like I have to. I love it so you much. You just fucking walk so around I'll, singing. If I have to find a place by myself, I'll do it. Or like when I set up drums every day, I put on Ar- Ariana Grande, sing along while I'm setting up every day. I want to see and Ariana puts me, Grande is fucking sick. Puts me in the vibe, dude. Like it's like I have to have it. Like, I have to sing. And you're a really good singer. Thank you, bro. That's fine. I want to see that. I want to see you, you packing, <laughs> setting up a drum kit. Get on fucking Twitch. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do an, an Ari cover for sure. What are you going to do? Uh, only one. That vocal run, dude. Positions. Come on. <laughs> um, okay. Singing literally was my next question, but Ooh. fuck it. We just did it. Um, <laughs> and now we're talking about foods. 
Um, I literally warm ups was my fucking one of, one of my other questions because I wanted to talk about that. So what we're gonna do? You're gonna plug whatever you got to plug, and then we're gonna do the Dream Festival, and then we're gonna go and eat. I guess me and you are gonna eat. You're gonna, yeah. I've just seen that's a Clocks and Colors hoodie. Yeah, yeah they, I'm, I'm clocked, they, clocked and colored up. Yeah, they DM <laughs> me on Instagram a couple months ago. Said, Yeah, how'd you like some stuff? And I was like, Yeah. So I I wear this hoodie like every tour. Um, Aren't you fucking legends? I got one of their. What is this? Little chain action too. Ooh, the yeah. I'm chainless today. I got a bunch of yeah, T-shirts. But yeah, they're cool. Fuck yeah! But remember me? Give me more shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, guys. <laughs> that's that's three this episode that I've been asking for free shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's expensive. <laughs> Fucking light. <laughs> um, well, we got we got coming up after this that you can announce. Don't give me some shit that you accidentally announce. Yeah. Festivals. Yes. Um, thinking we can about say what that. you can yeah, announce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there is a tour we are now singing like a week or two for the US. Um, oh, you can talk about that because I'll wait. I'll wait until the tour announces and then... It might be two weeks. I can wait. Okay. Then you can, let's talk about that because then I can plug it at the beginning as well. And it's okay. a double plug. Lona Shore, Shot of Intent, Brand of Sacrifice. Oh my God. Body Snatcher, Boundaries, Stack. Super Stack. It's only like... Three weeks long, but it's, it's a stack. It's like B Market. Little action tour. US. Yep. Oh my God, um, that's fucking so sad. Yeah. So, so grateful to have the slot they gave us. Yeah. Um, Love those dudes. Insane drummer tour as well. Bro. Yes. Austin Archie is one of my favorite people in the world. Yeah. Like an, an angel of a person, insane drummer. Like, yeah. So sick. Uh, we are doing the August festivals in Europe. Um, oh, we're going to miss it. We're doing the June ones. It's always like one yeah. or the other. Yeah, we didn't get offered the June ones this time around, but um, I'm sure next year. Um, so it'll be Dynamo Festival, Brutal Assault, Summer Breeze, Alcatraz, et cetera, et cetera. That's a bunch of cool shit, though. Yeah, and hopefully the shows in between the festivals, potential to be with some really cool bands. Um, that probably won't get announced for a long time. Yeah, we'll leave that, we'll um, leave that one. But the festivals are announced. Um and then yeah, probably time to write some new stuff. I think it's been a year since the album's out, and I know a year and a half to two years is kind of like the optimal uh, release again time. How know? do how do you are you the main writer and then it goes to everyone else, or are you the sole writer? Uh, you can big yourself up. You don't have to. No one's uh, feelings gonna. Get I mean, he up. like. I mean, he yeah. yeah you he, answer. He writes like. Everything and then, if it's just, I'm sh- I'm sure it's probably similar for you for you guys too. Like if he writes like a whole song, and then if there's anything like a riff that will like you know maybe change this up or whatever, he's like f- gladly fixes yeah. it. But it, he, I mean, he writes everything. Same thing like orchestra stuff, and then same with drums. Like pretty damn good at programming drums. Honestly, it's like very grateful not, f- grateful yeah, for that. There's not like I just want the vibe. I just want the, the vibe time. that you want. And then I'll make it sick. But like, just give me a vibe that I know you want and I'll make it crazy. And that's what we do. He sends me the MIDI. I program out what I'm going to do. And then I go live track that as close to what I wrote as possible. And you know, like you'll get there and I I program something that I think is possible. And then I'm like, yeah, all right. Well, let me, I got to change oh, yeah. a little bit, but... That's and then even when I nail it in the studio, I change it again. Live. Yeah, exactly. Because you're like, yeah, I can't do this like half the time. Yeah, yeah. I do it like, I do it on the 40th take. Yeah. And then Will Putney's like, oh yeah, that's fine. And I'm like, it's not fine. And yeah. I have to play it. And it's like, yeah, I'll be two footing that section. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we never have to like wait for a producer to be available for us to get into their studio to do a record. Like I'll do everything at my place except we'll outsource drums. But getting into a drum studio isn't too hard. There's and a then of... someone else mixes it. Yes. Who mixed the last one? Uh, Christian Donaldson mixed the last two albums. He he does the ingested stuff as yeah. well. So yeah. glad that they started going. I mean, it, it happened a while ago when they started going to like good producers. Yeah. Uh, because it helps. The, the first couple, though. the fuck, the kick drums on the on the OG surpassing the boundaries of human suffering. Yeah. You know what's crazy is <laughs> I love. I loved that. Like, that was the first time I ever heard anything like that. Like the original surpassing <laughs> the and, like, fucking kick drum. How loud it is! It's, it's crazy. so it's loud, insane. but like 
I just wanted to turn it all the way up every day. Like, I loved how it sounded. I knew, like, my music would never work with that because I want to hear the guitars and stuff. But, like, I thought it sounded so sick. And Lin can, Lin can do it as well. Yeah. Lin is fucking God, great. I love that guy. Great drummer. Psychopath as well. Absolutely. Is he still a psycho? Oh, I, I, oh I used to work with him he in He lives a in warehouse. Spain now, dude. Does he? I used, I used to work with Lin. Is, or is he still a chef? I'm not sure. You worked he, with him at a restaurant? I, no, I worked with him in a warehouse, like in for like three years in no fucking 2007. Way. So we worked Sick. in a warehouse that dealt with Metal Blade. It was like a music distributor. It was Metal Blade, uh, Candlelight, like Nuclear Blast. Like it was sick. It was fucking awesome. But it's just like me, Lynn, a bunch of other people like in bands that didn't, bands and whatever. It was so much fun. Just. Damn. Just picking CDs and putting them in a thing like you just you you got like uh like discount so it's just like I just all I did to spend all my money on like all the merch and all the CDs were already there. Damn, that's so sick. That's fucking sick. But that I'm in my head the f- I the burned into my fucking brain is the first track on surpassing the boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Seriously, it's got it's, its pros so and cons. You yeah, know. it's fucking sick. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad they started going to producer producer. Yeah. Um, speaking of festivals, we've got a dream festival to curate here. I'm going to talk you through it. It's a it's a section. It's, it's everyone's favorite section of the fucking podcast. <laughs> it anything goes, okay. okay. And you can give this. You can set. You don't have to agree together. I did a couple of episodes where I did double guests, and people were like, "Why didn't you do the dream festival?" I was like, "Because it's two people. It's too hard." And then it ends up everyone loves that bit. So okay, I'll carry on doing it. Um, it is anything fucking goes. We've had wild shit. Like Will Putney wanted Nine Inch Nails on one stage, Metallica on the other stage, and they play one song each, uh, and the whole audience is dogs. <laughs> like so, it, so like it 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 can get wild. But let's start seriously, and we're gonna start with the location of the festival on. I was about to say on Earth, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where, it, but it, you know, draw from some fucking experiences. <laughs> no, right. Like, oh, I wanted to be on the moon. That's what <laughs> we can't that's talk literally, about. That's literally what moon. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, Drake, think, think, get in the zone. You're like, you're. It's it ha- has to be for now. Start off in the realms of possibility, and if it goes psycho, it goes psycho. Okay. Dream place to have a festival. I think my entire life, I've always wanted to go to like Oslo. Never no been. Way. I think for me, that would be like one of the coolest ever. Never been. It's me, very yeah. expensive. I've heard that. It is cool. Yeah, I've never been. I want to go really bad. They got a festival there, I think. Hole in the Sky. Yeah. yeah I think there's a fucking area. Where are you going? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, It'll be so cold in Oslo. I know. I just, I, just, I, know. <laughs> I just really like whenever I go to Las Vegas, I'll we'll just say one of those hotels will... Yeah. Oh, like a casino hotel. Yeah, they're just with the fountains and shit. It's like okay, seen aesthetically pleasing to me. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna combine the two of those now. Yeah, because we're in a L.A. Uh, Las Vegas style hotel in Oslo. Ooh, sick. It's like a fucking Black Mountain Caesar's yeah. Palace. It's <laughs> the fucking that's the thing, like with the big Sphinx with corpse paint on. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what, pretty sick, actually. So. The accommodation is usually the next question, but that's that's obvious that it's going to be in the hotel unless you've got a separate dream accommodation. You're going to tell me uh, something like camping. No way. Come on. No, no way. way. Oh, I love camping. <laughs> no, I hate it. I, I Incredibly inconvenient. I hate <laughs> it so much. Dude, you don't Camper? like mosquitoes too bougie, when you man. sleep, dude? I'm too bougie. Don't you love sleeping on rocks and have mosquitoes I, visit you? I hate it so much. And the other thing is, it's like being on tour is essentially camping. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, exactly. It's so camping. I want a fucking 75-inch TV in my PS5, dog. I'm sorry. It, I'm you, sorry. I you <laughs> find... This, this is like a segue from the festival. That's why it exists. Like, do you find when you come home from tour, like people trying to get you to do anything i'm so bad oh my god everyone's like oh you want to come out tonight i'm like no No. i've just been out for three months yeah exactly i want to sit there and watch that (laughs) yeah straight up that's all i want to do i do nothing yeah it's better especially like the day i got back from like 
I did like 13 weeks of touring in a row, I think it was. And we came as Romans was in the area. Andy texts me and he's like, are you going to come out tonight? And it's like an hour and a half. I'm like, fuck. I love, <laughs> I love Andy so much. He does like most of our shirt designs. But like, oh, I, really? I was just, yeah. But I was like, I just was on tour for 13 weeks. I, can't, I don't have anything else going on tonight, but I... Can't bring so, yeah, I, I, I feel like I sh- I feel like I shouldn't. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I love like seeing friends as they pass through and coming through, and I like you know work with a bunch of bands with production. So I don't. F- I feel like everything I no one ever makes me do stuff. Maybe my fiance every once in a while, but like I'm always down to do stuff with her. You know, it's I, I need to be made to do anything. Yeah, it's like too. oh, well, you no one made you do this podcast, right? No, but this is like, <laughs> this is in my fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. I'm coming to your show, right? And yeah. that is a fucking, I don't do that. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. people come to the podcast, are you coming to the show tonight? And I go, eh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> eh. Last, and last night I went, I had um, Malevolence here and they played with Trivium and it's literally, you could throw a fucking stone at the venue from here. So I was like, okay, I'll go. Yeah. yeah. And it was sick. It's just, I don't know what it is. Part of me is like, I get like, oh, just standing up oh, at yeah. a show. Like, no, if I don't get like the the access pass, <laughs> I was like, ah. yeah, I no, have, I have <laughs> turned around, and I'll admit this now on the podcast. Right, I've never admitted this on the podcast. So I had Andrew Hurley from Four Out Boy on the podcast, and uh, I he doesn't know this. <laughs> this is an admission. So they they're playing with Green Day and. Weezer. Sick. Damn. And it's like, it's close. It's not really close, but it's close. So we do the podcast. It's amazing. Lovely guy. I never met him before. It was a really nice podcast. He had a lot of fun on the Dream Festival. He's a D&D player. So it was like, he got really into the fucking, into the roles. Mm-hmm. And then I'm dropping him off and he's like, oh, you should come to the show. Like, I'll get you AAA um, and, you know, we can hang out or whatever. And I was like, you know what, I will. Like, I wasn't you know, I wasn't going to ask or whatever. You know what, I will. And in my head, the diva in me is like, ah, AAA is fucking Green Day, it's fucking Weezer, it's Fall Out Boy. Good for the podcast if I do meet anyone. Right. Definitely got some sweet tequila backstage. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be a rider spider, but right. whatever. Turn up. And it's like a festival because it's fucking Green Day and Fall Out Boy and Weezer, obviously. It's a huge fucking thing. Yeah. Go to accreditation. And they give me a ticket. And I go, oh, uh, that, like, is there supposed to be a pass there? And they were like, no pass. And I was like, okay. And I just walked home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were, we, uh, me and our merch guy for this tour, uh, the day our flight landed, there was Architects Northlane playing in Frankfurt, and we go to that show. Um, same thing. Uh, it wasn't Northlane's tour, so they couldn't get the AA pass or whatever. Um, so I just go for an hour, watch two songs from Northlane, like six songs from Architects. I'm like, all right, well, I've been standing for an hour. It's the standing. Yeah. yeah. I, I hate standing. Once I, I hit like 30, dude, like my back has always been bad because it just play drums too long but dude it's one hour standing i'm like all right people yeah. people are gonna be like oh you oh you are so lucky it's like my no, dude no, my I'm sciatica not. dude fucking <laughs> like like no joke like especially in the cold if i if i'm standing even in the cold for like an hour and a half two hours i have to lay down because my sciatica is like oh finally ripping. there's something wrong with you yeah oh, i can play the drums at <laughs> two years old with no food and i'm high <laughs> But no, it's like it's not like being a diva. It's just fucking. No, I just I'm, I've always hated standing. I, yeah, I'm damn used to it. You know what? I went to go see Miss Sugar with <sighs> with the man from Slipknot, and we got there, and he had his own dressing room. What? <laughs> but he wasn't on the tour. We were just going to the thing, and they gave him his own little Jesus room and his own Christ. little rider. I was like, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. I mean. And I'm not, it's not because I don't like the music. It's because I want to sit down. I went to see Radiohead, right? My favorite fucking band of all time. Really? And it was in a 3,000 cap venue, which they do not play. It was in the Roundhouse, London. And my friend was getting me the ticket because he worked for their merch company. And he was like, oh, what? Do you want seated or standing? And the kid in me activated and went, oh, standing, obviously. Yeah. Like you did when you were a kid. And I got there. And my back hurts. And I was like, this is the worst. Oh, it's my favorite band of all time. This is the worst show I've ever been to. 
I feel that so hard, dude. <laughs> All right, let me, let me get back on track. We are in Oslo in a casino. Do you gamble or is it just the aesthetic? Just the aesthetic. aesthetic. I've, yeah, I've never gambled. Yeah. The vibe is cool. Yeah. Uh, nothing crazy, at least. I mean, okay, so foodie, you obviously don't give a goddamn fuck. What is what is Kate? What's catering? Any any fucking cuisine you want on earth? Yeah, I mean, so you know what I'm like a huge sucker for? It's called a coconut shrimp roll. It's like shrimp tempura <sighs> in deep fried coconut flakes sprinkled with sweet chili sauce. It's that like actually, that actually sounds good. It's so good. Is there a particular place that does that? Surprisingly, it's in Salt Lake City. It's like the oh, last yeah. place you'd expect to get good sushi, but it's called Simply Sushi, and they just have these weird specialty rolls. And you're like, oh, I'm not getting sushi from Salt Lake, but it's I don't even get the, like the raw fish sushi. I got like the deep fried ones that don't even contain fish. They have like chicken or fried shrimp or yeah. stuff that's good anywhere. So, I mean, it's also all, all frozen. One of my favorite fucking one of my favorite uh, sushi places is in Arizona. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona doesn't have an ocean. No, yeah. <laughs> there's no ocean there. Okay, so sim- is Simply Sushi, yep. are they going to ca- they're catering the festival? Yep. You're going for that. I'm going to go next time I'm in Salt Lake. That's next time good. I'm playing the complex and there's fucking nothing to do mm-hmm. at all. Although well, there is a good gym there. Just so you know, they closed the actual Salt Lake City location. <sighs> so now you have to go 20 minutes south to West Jordan. <sighs> so it's like just far enough where I don't want to pay for a round trip Uber. But if we're driving like on the way to the venue or from the venue, I'm like, guys, 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 can we please stop? Can we please? Can I get takeout? I'll be so fast. And and like, no, and no one else. <sighs> and basically, it's just, no yeah. one else wants it. Yeah. So I'm like, you want it, right? You, uh, yeah. I guess I'll have something. It's like, cool. Let's go. <laughs> push, really push it. Yeah. Who, yeah. who drives you in the states? Uh, we we usually turns. we usually split it. We we did a bandwagon. We drive our last tour, um, but generally we we just split it. I'm like. I like night driving. Like my sleep schedule is like backwards. I like go to sleep at like five six a.m. So I like I love night driving. Plus, it's the it's like the best time for me to sing. Impossible to fall asleep if you're fucking Bel- belting yeah. out. It's impossible. Fucking Ariana, nice. Yeah, exactly. So love I, I I love it honestly. Have you got anything to add to the like? You got your one meal a day. Poutine. Huge poutine fan. Nice. Huge. That's a good time. One of my favorite things in the world. Particular establishment? Uh, oh, it's like Chef. It's like Gaston something in uh, Quebec City. Mm. It is the best poutine ever. The last time we played there, my, it was actually my first tour with Shadow. I was a fill-in at the time. It was Despised Icon, Us, like Suffocation. It was like stacked. I ate it three times that day. Me, that's, yeah, that's breaking your rule. Yes. I, if I know this about you by now, bro, play drums at two, one meal <laughs> a day. <laughs> yeah. Even me, I was like, Are I you went going back standard three times. poutine, St- or if you got it, like a specific, either just the regular or or bake so, or bacon. So fucking that's hungry. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. the problem with this part of the podcast. Yeah, uh, I wanted a quick, <laughs> a quick, slightly personal, slightly rude aside. So you were a fill in. Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, what was the business? You don't have to give me figures, mm-hmm. but give me... You were a fill-in. I assume you're getting paid to be a fill-in. Right. And then was there a... The the deal I always had with him, just because to find someone that can play our songs, I feel like we were a month out from tour, a um, little over when we found out Anthony couldn't. And again, like... Don't blame him whatsoever, but we didn't have options. So I just kind of like gave him like a minimum figure. And I was like, if we make more, we'll split everything evenly. So he's had a even tour split like from the start just because um, I wanted to make it work, you know? Yeah, I didn't yeah, want to low ball and yeah. potentially not get him. I just from the beginning just like... But even like... Just make it work. That's the thing like that's... I. I respect that so much. Like, like he didn't have to do that. It's a and good I, starting point to like. Yeah, but what's cool is like, I've been touring since I was sixteen. I started touring because like, I found a Craig's a band on Craigslist. Like I was a sophomore in high school, and I was like, I want to tour. And my parents were super Christian, and they were like, You're only allowed to tour during the summer and if it's a Christian band. So I fucking went on Craigslist. I was like, I want to fucking do this for a job. 
And I went on Craigslist and looked up a Christian touring band, and that's how I got started. Some random band no one's ever heard of. Quit that band like to join another band that we had met on tour, and that just kept happening. It's like insane. But I made from like 16 to 21, I literally made zero dollars on every tour. Never made Even anything. Even with the Christian money. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's are like... Are you a Christian? It's fine no, if you no, are. No, 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 not it's anymore. It's absolutely fine That's why. No, not, not really anymore. I honestly don't really even know what I believe, honestly. Agnostic? I'm not really sure. I'm like figuring it out, you know? But... What, I, you, what you got? What you got? Yeah, what do you... I would say agnostic. I think I used to be atheist, and then I was like, but wait, I haven't actually seen... Wait, what, what is that there agnostic is nothing. Again? It means... I, I, th- I think of it as probably not. I was like, there's probably no God, but... Maybe there is. I, I I can't really say for sure. So I, that's the thing. The whole God thing is strange, but like I definitely, like undeniably, when I have been a shitty person or like negative thoughts, my life's worse. When I'm nicer to people, I do the right thing, try to think positively, better things happen. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I've seen it. You know what I mean? So, but I- anyway. I didn't make like any money because like even that Christian man, bro, it was like 10 people at, at it. We're playing at a church and there's 10 people there. So like, you know what I mean? So that for Matt years Griner. and years. Mm-hmm. Matt Griner's there. Who else is in the church? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, he was like my favorite drummer. Like I was like super into that shit, but didn't make anything He's for years. He's fucking incredible. And then, it's like, an easy joke. And then I joined this band Seeker and I was making, I went from making $0 to making like 350 a week which for me was like holy shit like this is so much money and then i we i did that band for like a year and then they just broke up like like van just couldn't afford really to be a band anymore Mm. i got the faceless gig i was in only in that band for like four months did two tours in that band i was getting a hundred dollars a day and i was like oh shit this is like so much money then i joined abigail williams and it was no like, way you've done all these. Yeah. And I was in Abigail for like two years and I, I ended up leaving Abigail for, for Shadow because I was like, yo, I love Ken. He's a, he's a good dude. He He's done a lot for me, had my back. I was like, if you had this option, I know you would take it. And like, it's wrong for me to like keep, you know, you need to have a drummer that can commit and I want to commit to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But same thing, like Abigail was like similar money, like around 100 a day. And so even if he would have been like, the most I ever made in my life on a tour, even for like two straight months of touring, was two grand. That's the most I'd ever made in like eight years of touring. So if he would have been like 4000 even if it wasn't an even split, if he would have said $4,000, I would have been like, fuck yeah. That's over double what I've ever made. Yeah. So I, re- I appreciate him like being fair. And I did that first tour with Despised Icon. Did the second tour, which was our, like, our first headliner ever. It was like a, a testing the waters like a two-week Right? Yep. Like a two week headliner. And at the end of that, I guess Anthony had like accepted his position that he was offered. And yeah, at the end of the tour, Chris basically came up to me and he was like, Look, uh, honestly, you kind of did better than we even thought you were going to do. And like, if you want this position, it's yours. Like, record the next album, be an official part, and explain like the business to me. And I, I mean, I literally cried. I don't know if you remember that, but. I, I was like, it's a dream come true. Like I, I was already a, bi- a fan of this band before, so it just it worked out so sick, dude. And I gotta say, it is it's cool that that is what you're doing, and it's the split, and it's cool that you started on that yeah. because you hear so I hear so much shit of, the, and it's always the fucking death metal bands, right? And it's always the bands with the the drummer has the hardest job. Yeah, man. categorically, the drummer has the hardest fucking job, and I hear of all these fucking. When it's like, this is the band, but this is a touring member, and it's right. the drummer. I'm like, that motherfucker is carrying you, and you are you're just admitting like we do not pay that person what they're worth. Right. They don't nine times out of ten they don't pay them like as much as the sound guy. Admittedly, this like the sound right. guy guy is gender neutral by the way. Um, <laughs> it, it, admittedly, like the sound, it, like obviously you need the sound to be great, but you need a fucking drummer. Right. It's and it. It fucking annoyed me. I'm like, I'm not gonna throw him under the bus on here, but there's, I know stories of fucking great drummers who are just getting fucked by this. Yeah, absolutely. Aside from that, you filled in for Whitechapel. Yes. Was that good? Amazing. We did. I did a festival with them, learned six songs, and then the next tour that we had, it was 
as lay dying them us and at the end this is like crazy so the drummer that was playing for Whitechapel is the actual drummer of Enterprise Earth okay they got a revolving door situation happening yeah so at like four days into the tour he comes up to me and he's like yo I know you just did that fest with Whitechapel so you know those six songs we're playing those six songs plus three more he's like Enterprise has some headlining shows that I it's either you learn three Whitechapel songs or I have to teach a drummer 13 like a headliner set Mm -hmm. for Enterprise and Enterprise shit's hard as fuck too man it's crazy so he was like can you do this for me? And I was like, I would fucking love to. So basically he just told me that and I learned, you know, over the next like two weeks or whatever, I learned the last three songs that I needed to learn and the last four shows of that tour, I pulled double duty. Like I played Shadow Set, waited, like left my kid up there, drank water, drank more energy, probably smoked a decent amount of weed and then came back and ripped the White Chapel set Psycho. for the last four shows. And then I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel I, I could have played a third set. You are for fucking, sure. I wish I was you. I I actually did this. This is so stupid, but I I just wanted to like prove something. To, I don't know if it was to myself or what. There's one show I played where I played a local show in Dallas. I was the only drummer on the show. I had f- five of my bands. I was the only drummer. I played five sets in a row. Just to prove that I could fucking do it. Old death metal. Every, yeah. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. And then and then a couple months later, I felt bad. And I was like, well, I guess I should probably let one drummer on it. So I had an opening drummer and then did four sets. Jesus Christ. Just, just to like, I don't even know why, but just like to say that I could like to prove it to myself that I could do it. So well, stupid. Sorry to go back to the Christian thing and not even the fucking uh, dream festival so shit. Funny. But like what? What did, what did your parents think? Because obviously the 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 overarching theme of fucking metal is like, oh, especially yeah. blasty metal is fucking at least perceived to be Satan and right. heavy shit. Right. You get in trouble. You get grounded. Well, that see that's the thing. Like they really, I really don't think they understood until this happened. Like it just seemed like this dream that like I really wasn't making much money. And, and honestly, my, my parents were pushing me like, they're like, you you might need to like get a normal job. You know what I mean? When did this happen? Uh, my, my first tour with them was September, October of 2019. So you'd have been 27. Yeah. That's about the same age that I actually quote unquote made it or just, you know, like, Oh, it's a job now. Yes. People don't realize, like, there are outliers and there's a lot of, like, young bands that are fucking killing it. Mm -hmm. But, like, you just need to keep fucking going. Yeah. You just need to keep going, especially, like, as a drummer with a million bands. Yeah. And then eventually... You find the one that's perfect and you do that. And, like, yeah, and then he's inspired me a lot because, I mean, dude, he does seven things. He's got, like, his own studio. He does so much stuff. And it's just inspiring. It's like... Plug I, your studio. What's your studio called? Yeah. I, I just call it Chris Meisman Recordings. It's just... I thought about, like, giving it a name, like a name that wasn't my name, but it's just kind of like... I'm associated as, like, guitarist of these bands already. Like, people know me from that, so why not just keep my name in it? That's, that's kind of my thought. That's what keeps you busy off tour. Yes. It's just... Right. It's inspiring to me, like... You know, you see all these... When I was growing up, I'd see all these dudes that said they wanted to do this, but what they were showing was not... They didn't really want to do it. Yeah. And I meet him, and this dude's, like, doing whatever it takes to have the life that he wants strictly with music. And I'm like, yo, that's fucking sick. So it's inspiring me now. Like, same shit. Like, I'm like I'm going to have... I'm going to get a website, you know? I do live drum session work. I do program drum session work, drum lessons. I'm going to eventually have merch solo project where i sing like i'm you know it's i want to be a smart business person but still all music you know what i mean it's mad inspiring it can be done it can be done you just need to keep fucking going yeah bro you gotta want it enough that's While it. you're there go to www.thedownbe.at and buy a fucking t-shirt and go to the Get patreon that sick fucking logo go to the patreon give me one pound just one pound can make me feed myself <laughs> <laughs> and de- in fact the Patreon pays for shit like in a minute we're gonna go to Nando's and I'm gonna fucking pay for it 
on the downbeat card that the Patreon pays for. Anyway. Thanks. Dream Festival. Back. <laughs> we <We're> back. <laughs> I might just start like starting the podcast with the Dream Festival because it goes off on like decent tangents. It's right. like, this is the bit everyone cares about. Like, this is now a nice conversation. And the bit before is like, interview fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Euro <laughs> shit. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've done accommodation. We are in Oslo in a Las Vegas style hotel. We have Simply Sushi, RIP, Salt Lake City, <laughs> um, is catering and poutine from, we don't really know the name, but it's just poutine. Yep. Okay, the only rule is that you are playing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so who is headlining? And you let's go let's go two separate days so you both pick a headline and it can be fucking anyone alive dead different genre. I think you're gonna pick who I hope you're gonna pick. So I'll I'll pick the guys that aren't that Metallica Slipknot. Oh, nice. What's well, well, fucking segue before we come to you. Give me top five Metallica in order. Like songs, albums. Okay. Um. Yeah, what are you putting I don't even one? know. It's I don't a even. Tough one. Yeah, I don't even know how I would order the five because I would probably pick the just the first five as the top. Yeah, that's five. why it's the hardest exactly. question. <laughs> but I, I I actually really like Death Magnetic though, the album after Saint Anger because that's think, that's like the first Metallica album I heard after the Black album. Um, it's not in your top five though. Come on, I I would <laughs> put it over Kill 'Em All. That's the thing is like Kill 'Em All would probably be the lowest of the five. Um, uh, okay, put Death Mag- Magnetic in at five then. I, w- I would I would tie Kill 'Em All and Death Magnetic at five maybe or something like that. Um, nice, fucking controversial. <laughs> but I agree. To be like, honest, I agree. I maybe Kill 'Em All by I don't know. It's I'm tough. not a Kill 'Em All guy really. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. Hit the lights is sick. A lot of sick songs there. Um, but number one, I would also maybe put Ride the Lightning at four. So Master Justice in Black. Yeah, kind of like is, those top. That's the tricky part. Um, the producer Hetfield's choice, we call this. Yeah, <laughs> the producer and me would pick Black Album. Yeah, the best songwriting, kick, best kick and snare of all time. Yeah, the ever, songwriting yeah. and production is excellent. Um, Master Puppets like goes the hardest. Like it's Damage Incorporated goes very hard. Battery um, and Justice has that prog. Those yeah, that extended. I'm making you pick though. I know. I know. Um, I would say lately I'm more likely to put on black album songs. I'm the same. Yeah, and I was never like that. I was always Justice. It's also the first full Metallica album I ever heard was the Black Album. So I'd have to give it to that one, just barely though. Favorite track? If you say "End the Same Man," I'm gonna flip the fucking table and leave. Yeah, it was in the beginning. Um, <laughs> I think my favorite like underrated track is "Holier Than Thou." But it's my literally f- top five yeah. songs for me. Uh, but my favorite, like, oh, of course, track is uh, Wherever I May Roam, probably. Yeah. When when Holier Than Now drops down to just bass and drums, mm-hmm. it's oh the God. hardest fucking shit And go- ever. going into the solo, too. Yeah. Insane. So sick. Yeah, okay, sure. we got that out of the way. Glad you're on Team Metallica. I fucking hate it when people think it's edgy to be like, oh, I don't like Metallica. Yeah. yeah. You're fucking wrong. Yo, yeah, Lar- like, unpopular opinion, I- Lars is a fucking pioneer drummer i don't he's sick as fuck he played with those in uh that's his sticks from i can't remember the festival power dude but my friend like he literally used those sticks my friend ben from royal blood was wearing a lars ulrich t-shirt that i made at the festival they played together got a photo lars's wife asked for five of the t-shirts so i can only imagine somewhere i sent her them somewhere there is a photo of Family Ulrich in Downbeat shit, and I need the fucking That's photo. So epic. Um, One or two headliners? You can have two. He had two. We've got two days. Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, bro. I'm fucking coming to this. Straight were, up. I thought you were doing a Van Stone full dream theater. Damn it. All right. I'm coming to but this they're, But they're on it. Yeah, they're, they can they're be next. They can support, they can, right? They can be. Uh, we can do that. That's they're the somewhere. Thing. Two pop, king and queen. And then fucking Avenged Sevenfold Dream Theater. I love it. Huge. What's back? What's the backstage situation? Like accommodations, rider type. Oh, just well, like oh, you can give me some rider. You can also give me just like is there any particular like festival you've been to, or just like what's your 
in a dream world, before you play a set, where are you? What, where are you hanging out? Doesn't need to be in the realms of possibility. All right, for me, there would literally be just a weed room. <laughs> nice. Straight up. Perfect. With mushrooms as well. What, what constitutes a weed room? It's literally a weed dispensary, but you don't pay for anything. Nice. Free weed room. Yeah. Love it. Whatever you want, you fucking take it and we'll fucking eat it. And what are you hoping <laughs> that they have? Have you got like a specific, like, if I don't know, you guys call it like, oh, Burberry smash cake fucking dog. I, I, honestly, it's all bullshit now. You could fucking say any name and somebody will be like, oh, it's crazy. You make it up. <laughs> yeah. Six foot bong. A six foot bong. Six foot bong. Or is that a name for something or you mean literally? No, a literal six, six foot, bong. foot bong. The first time I ever smoked out of, bong, of a bong, it was a six foot bong named Satan. I, nice. And I remember ripping it and going into the bathroom and looking in the mirror and I was just drooling. And that was like still, I think, the highest I've ever been. So that, a pin, because when in the... St- in, oh, yeah. Pin, like yeah. A, a cartridge. Yeah. Like in the stage, dude, on stage, I'm ripping... A pin and it's crazy and like nicotine in between songs. Digital spliff. Yes, sir. Nice. Yeah, straight right. up. Exactly. Fuck yeah. What about you? I mean, it'd be like you know that wedding banquet situation back there. <laughs> all the waiters with the cocktail trays. Love like, it. Oh, coconut shrimp roll for you, yeah. sir. I love like, it. Yes. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> love it. A little of that. They have the, the crab rangoon roll. Oh, the, and it's the all, Baja chicken roll. And it's all just like. We got like, so like you got the trays. James Hetfield's there. He's like, oh. "Oh, what's up, Chris? Love the new album." I'm like, <laughs> "Wow, thanks, James." You know, Corey so, Taylor is like, "Dude, good to see you." Nice. You know, just kidding. They, um, it could happen. It's the Dream Festival. Exactly. Yeah. Vince Sevenfold set. Yeah, is a hologram of the Rev on drums though. Oh, nice. We've had a couple of holograms in this Dream Festival. It's the only way. Who is it? Brooks Wackerman plays for them now. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Legend. Great drummer. But the Rev, I would not be here right now if it was not for the Rev. Like, my, he was my favorite drummer. Yeah, period. he was sick. And, you know, I, like, got emotional the other day because some kid was like, do you like the Rev? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I hear it. And you're playing. And I was like, damn. Damn. <laughs> like, for real, like, that really meant a lot to me because, like, it, like, crushed. Like, the day that he died, dude, I was like... I didn't, I, watched, even, I didn't even know what to do. I watched the myself. memorial video like four times yeah. within a week. Yeah. yeah like life, life-changing rough. drummer, dude. Also like in, like drummer doing vocals, Aaron Gillespie too. Yeah. One of my biggest, like, dude, it's like insane, bro. Under Oath, know, Under Oath would be on it. I have, so I have met him three separate times, but I feel bad because I, I can't judge a person. Because you know how it is on tour, and if you are not in the right state of mind, it doesn't. You don't know who's coming up to you. I've tried to meet him three times, and all three times, it's just not. He's just not having it. Really? Yeah. Oh, he was so nice to me no, on tour. I, I and I've heard that, and I've and I've checked out the podcast. He see, like he he seems like such a great guy. I would really like a chance to like get to meet him and like punish him a bit without it without being, punishing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's the fucking man. Okay, yeah. so Under Oath on it as well. I was going to say, okay, so now we need to go. So we've got Metallica, Slipknot, Bieber, Grande, <laughs> Avenge Sevenfold, Dream Theater. Who's on drums for Dream Theater? Mike Portnoy. Thank fuck. The King. God. Obvi- like, obviously, I know you're probably going to agree with this. Obviously, if you talk about in terms of like technical skill, yeah. The oh, other mic is like technically better because he can do all this stuff you talk about a drum part writing and like inspiring and the, and people. the spirit of yeah. mike Pernod and the right left foot, foot, the, foot. Bro, the right left foot foot fill the guy oh, wouldn't be here two over two <laughs> four over two all day it's like, yeah. oh. he followed me on he Instagram was the recently guy. and it was just like fucking sick. and i like messaged him immediately and i was like you want to come on the podcast he was like i don't do podcasts but i like your shit and i was like oh that's really nice i would have shit my pants yeah, it was cool as fuck legendary Okay. Um, yeah. What? So we need like a smaller stage. I need mm-hmm. either what you're listening to now, or like a smaller band you think needs more attention. It's just like that that movement of uh, Architects, Northlane, Silent Planet, 
Void of Visions doing some good shit. Um, that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, Thornhill, but... Thornhill's doing some good shit. Because uh, North Island Architects don't need don't need the plug here. Everyone they don't. Knows who yeah, they are. really like Void sleep, of Vision. Sleep talking right now. Yeah. Dude. Invent anime. They don't need their help either. Nah, they're they're fucking. Up. Yeah, they're blown up. What do you think of the uh, it's the second podcast in a row I've talked about this? What do you think about the new song? From honestly, Sleep Token. I really haven't jammed uh, it that much. It has a funk section really? at the end. I followed the drummer yesterday. Yeah, I back. need to, I need to do a little more research on them, but I have like heard the full length once or twice. But it's I, not I like my it. shit. It's not my shit. But mm. like, I like I it whenever I hear it. it. Yeah. Um, Void of Vision's got that cool like fucking sexy goth thing going yes. on which i like there's a funny thing that actually you both enjoy which uh it might be out by the time this episode's out so it doesn't matter there is a downbeat void of vision thing happening Ooh, um sick. if you look there pull 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 that vinyl towards that? yeah you can pull that out so that is like stray did a version of our album which is that's obviously my dog that you met earlier sick. with uh with the guy Koki Greenway that does the he's done some of our shirts he's yeah great. I think I noticed that he's great so we did like a special edition of the album where it's like death metal artwork with That's my dog so fucking sick. stabbing people <laughs> holy but fuck we're doing a downbeat void of vision one and uh, I won't give you the big reveal because I think I'm going to do the reveal on an episode with uh, with them but okay. like put it this way you're really going to like it it's it's pretty fucking insane all right. Um, okay, so we've got Void Division, Thornhill. You got any little smally, smaller bands? So that's the, like, I'm like I'm not exaggerating. Like, I, I just listen to, like, Justin Pop. Bieber and Ariana Grande and shit. Like, yeah. oh, like I listen to what I like. I, I honestly very rarely listen to new music. What, um, do you know Jesse from My Art? Yeah. Beeler? Yeah, unbelievable. So Jesus, he. Do you remember when he he used to do videos of him just like blasting <laughs> over like fucking pop songs? You ever do that? Yeah, actually, I have. I have like, I need to get back into this. But like three years ago, when I got drum mics, I did a Barney, blast beat <laughs> video, reading Rainbow, Recess. You need to do Bieber and Ariana Grande because yeah. that's what I do on Twitch. Is I play to Bieber and yeah. Ariana Grande and fucking Doja Cat and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, and like a metal version. Sometimes it would be on, like a... Honestly, a gospel a, chop version or a metal version would be like sick as fuck. Get on it. Um, I'm fucking hungry and we're running out of time. What's yeah. the after party? Oof. Can't wait for people to leave comments like, you're always fucking hungry. I do these at the same yeah. time every day. Ice cream Sunday bar. Giant pool. Gentlemen. Yeah, giant pool. Giant pool with a weed bar that you can walk up to in the pool. Nice. And hit the six foot bong. Exactly. There you go. Does it use the pool water as some sort of... <laughs> well, it's just like a fucking hot tub, which is a bong. Yo. Way smarter. Yep. All right. <laughs> no rules. What's your ice cream? What's your ice cream situation? Oh, my God. Dude. You know what's good is not the hot fudge, not the caramel, but the peanut butter sauce. <gasps> we we love it so much, me and Tom, our guitarist. We literally just call it PBS. Yeah. And if it's like, if we're going anywhere, it's like, we'll say to the member of staff, assuming that they know and they don't. You guys got PBS? <laughs> yeah. Every time they go, what? what? <laughs> Peanut butter sauce. Oh, like, we got that. It's Fuck like, yeah. all right, and what do you want on toppings? Well, you got your Reese's Pieces, your Reese's, your Butterfingers. Like, you already put peanut butter on it. It's like, yeah, but yeah, fu- we, can, we can have more. Yeah. Okay, so we got, there's a weed bar and there's some sort of like, Ice cream froyo bar as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any like recreational activities or just the pool? Pool party? Yeah, pool party sounds sick. For me, I'm a huge football fan. I want a little football. Fan. Uh, fucking pickup game, dude. U- U.S. football. Yes, sir. Yeah. Not real football. Yeah, not the real. Uh, well, yeah. Who's your team? Uh, unfortunately, it's the Denver Broncos. <laughs> terrible year. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. It, this year was terrible. You know Literally, who, like the third worst team in the know, NFL. This year. Do you know who my team is? Who? The Cleveland Browns. Really? Just because of when I started touring America, I was like, I'm going to pick a team. And everyone was like, What team are you going to pick? And I was like, Who was the worst team? Yeah. And then they were like, Cleveland Browns. I was like, I'm a Browns that's guy. So yeah. <laughs> They're legend. Like the fucking NFL, like the Hall of Fame is in Ohio. I got my. Um, do you like do you like other sports or just basketball, baseball? Who's your basketball team? Probably has to be the Mavericks because I just grew up with them my whole life. Who's your baseball team? 
Astros. You haven't gone on ice hockey team? Not really. Like, never really got into no, I don't understand the rules. I picked all of mine based on just dumb shit. Um, I picked Nashville Predators for ice hockey because I, at that point, I thought the Tennessee flag was the Whitechapel logo. Dude, <laughs> literally same. When I filled in for them on that festival, no joke, we were driving around and I was like, every car had the fucking thing. And I was like, I was talking to the sound guy. I was like, yo, yo, your, your, your logo is on me. every car. And he's like, dude, that's the Tennessee flag. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yeah, you're as dumb as me. That's what I thought. So that's why they're my team. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Rockies is my baseball team. Ooh. Because two in one, the hats had CR, which is obviously my initials. But then they had a Reynolds on the team as well. I was like, okay, this is my team. Purple sick. Purple and then... I, I don't really have a basketball team. A 90s Chicago Bulls. Oh, yeah. The best. Any sports teams? No. no. <laughs> Not a single one. It's always always the geniuses. Always the, the genius yeah, writers. Computer, computer, computer guy. Yeah, yeah, got too much time. Yeah, I'm writing fucking symphonic yeah. blackened metal. Like, yeah. that's, that's the thing. I'm catching up on NFL stats, and he's just like, I just wrote like, the sickest song. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, before we end it. What genre do you put Shadow of Intent into? We like to think metal, you know. Yeah, come on, you need you need to you're gonna need to narrow it down. What one of the that's, that, that's the thing is, do we? For the purposes of this conversation, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, but what's going to annoy you the most if it's on a flyer, and what's going to annoy you the least, but narrowing it down a bit? Because you know they love a s symphonic. I know. What? Symphonic is probably probably an important symphonic word. Symphonic what though? Death metal? Wait, I wrote something on my Instagram. Let me Death core. I, I just like pick like five different adjectives. Let's see. <laughs> I may have said that. Uh progressive, symphonic, blackened, melodic, death metal. I wasn't far off with mine then a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely it's, blackened. That's yeah. what I would like it to be. But like some songs don't really have Elements that other songs have, you know? Like some songs, way less melodic. The kids just say Deathcore. Some aren't progressive at all. Some aren't That's blackened at all. Does Deathcore are... piss you off? No, I, I've been teetering. So for, I definitely went through this period for a few years because I like observe like what bands are like sticking around and what bands are dying off quick. And I noticed, oh, the Deathcore bands are dying off quick. But like the Meshuggah, Lamb of God, Gojira, true metal bands are like, decade several decade long careers so like oh i don't want i don't want to be i don't want to be a deathcore band but now today you see lona shore slars prevail it's like oh they grew faster than any of those bands ever did and don't seem to be dying off anytime soon so maybe deathcore isn't such a bad thing after all you know? <laughs> this guy's fucking smart i know yeah, yeah so you, moves yeah so if you call us either i won't get mad Lorna Shaw getting so fucking big is so cool. It yeah. is. And it's like, it's obviously like... Opens doors. Man. I think it's good for music. It's yeah, rising tides, baby. Yes. Yeah, bro. Lift all ships. Mm -hmm. On that note, let's go and eat and yeah. not eat. Yeah, exactly. Fuck yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, bro. You.